All right, so talked a lot about the salmon. You know, it's a popular family, lots to talk about. These other families are also great families. Uh, we just don't have as much information. So let's start here. We're going to talk about the uh, isosity or the pikes. Got four species of pike here in Kentucky. And these are pretty easy to notice. They're long and slender, uh, just like a gar. Dorsal fin and the anal fin are set way back by the caudal fin. Got big teeth, but they don't have the ganoid scales like a gar does, and they've got a duck's bill. And so it's pretty obvious to tell when you've got any sausage in your hands. And so there's an example of the duck's bill, which is the easiest way to tell these from the gar. They're um, pretty interesting fish, fairly popular sport fish. Um, they. Uh, Again, I'm distracted. The chickens have shut up, but now the ducks are making a ton of noise. And they're all the way across the pond. Uh, I think they've calmed down now. Okay. Anyway, the isosids spawn in wetlands, and they um, the eggs are adhesive, and so they stick to vegetation. And then when the fish hatches, it's got kind of a sucker on its mouth, which allows it to also stick to the vegetation. So they need this wetland vegetation for spawning. Well, wetlands are one of those ecosystems that we, you know, we just don't have anymore. We've drained 99% of them. And so this subsequently is going to have an influence on the populations of isosids. They don't have the proper spawning habitat, so you don't get a lot of good reproduction. Um, Another thing about isosids, uh, they have the, you know, the floating bones, the epineurals that uh, we mentioned before, that uh, like the Asian carp have, several species have these. These are prominent and, and you know, they're in these fish and this is a popular sport fish people like to eat and so people are aware of them. Um, they're difficult to remove, but if you know what you're doing, you can fillet around them. Um, and so then you can have a boneless fillet. And again, here's an example of these epineurals and these epiplurals. And uh, you can see how they kind of arrange themselves in the muscles. And so they're not attached to the rest of the, the skeleton. And so when you take that fillet off, those floating bones are in there. But if you can find them and you can kind of cut around them and make a shallow groove, you can pull them out. And that's another way that you can... You know, you can prepare the isosids to eat it, but also the Asian carp. If you get those out, you get a nice boneless fillet. Okay. Um, the species that we got here in Kentucky, we got the um, grass pickerel, um, which is also called the red fin by some people. You've got the chain pickerel, uh, the northern pike, and the muskie. And they all can be popular sport fish. The northern pike and the muskie get a lot larger. Um, the muskie is the probably the most important because they get huge. And you've got lakes like Cave Run Lake, which is like a world-class muskie fishery. Um, these others can be popular as well. So how are we going to identify these? First way, first thing we're going to do is look for the teardrop. And if they have a teardrop, they're a pickerel. And if they're not, they're not a pickerel. And so this is what I mean. If you look on the top, that's no teardrop. And on the bottom, that fish has a teardrop. So if you've got a teardrop, you're a pickerel. You can also look at the scales on the opercular cover. And so in the pickerel, that opercular cover is going to be fully scaled. And in the pike and the muskie, it's going to be half scaled. And so here you can see they're showing the opercular cover. We're not looking at the cheek yet, we're looking at the opercular cover, the part that you know can move. And you can see in this pickerel that it's scaled all the way, but you also see the teardrop. And now here's a hand drawing of a grass pickerel showing that opercular cover that's fully scaled. Now I think they should have drawn a teardrop on here too, but in this picture we're concentrating on the scales on the um, opercular cover. And so here we look at um, the red fin, the grass pickerel, which is much more common, versus the chain pickerel. And if that teardrop kind of has an angle back, that's a grass pickerel. And then there's also a little subtle difference in the shape of the head. 
and the grass pickerel is also is called a red fin pickerel sometimes because you got a reddish tint to the fins when you catch it live and the grass pickerel is going to be more common here we're looking at the shape of the head a shorter snout is going to be a grass pickerel a longer duck's bill is going to be your chain pickerel okay so if we don't have a pickerel and we want to figure out whether we've got a northern pike or a muskie now you can also look at, at scales but look at scales on the cheek not on the opercular cover so not on the part that flips out but the part directly in front of that between that and the mouth that's the cheek the northern pike has a fully scaled cheek whereas the muskie does not and so if you look at the northern pike the scales go all the way down and on the muskie they don't and I don't know how to remember this, but one way you can remember this is that Abe Lincoln had a full beard that went all the way down, and he was from the north. Mm. Maybe that helps. I don't know. Um, now you see in both of these that the opercular cover is half scaled. And the cheek is fully scaled in the northern pike. And then here's a picture of a muskie showing that cheek is only half scaled. You can also look at the pores and the jaw, but that's harder to remember, I think. Um, the pike has like chains on the side. It's got uh, light markings on a dark body. The muskie has more like stripes on the side, uh, dark markings on a light body. And so here's what can, you know, like a chain link fence. Think about this kind of what this northern pike looks like. Here you can see some stripes on the side of the muskie. Uh, as we said, the muskies can get very large, and so they're a prized sport fish. They've got pretty impressive teeth. Um, so this is a you know a top predator and a great fish to go after. Here's a small muskie that we caught. And so you can see it's, it looks like it's spots, but if you look at these spots, you can tell that these spots are the beginnings of those stripes. So the young ones don't seem to have, they're not born with the stripes. They spot up and then the spots kind of grow together, which I think is kind of cool. Okay, um, there's also a hybrid um, called the tiger muskie. And we talk about hybrids in fish a lot. In general, for any group of animals, uh, or organisms. Hybrids are when you take two species and you cross them and often the if they're separate species most of the time the offspring can't reproduce. Um, that's kind of the definition of species but the hybrids often have hybrid vigor. You get sort of the best alleles from both species and so the hybrids grow very well they just can't reproduce very well. And so you see that in fish um, so you get something like the tiger muskie that grows very well, and so that makes it attractive. It, it'll grow faster and, and get to, uh, you know, recruit to the fishery faster. Um, but you'll find out in fish that usually these hybrids are viable. That if you create hybrids, that they can breed with each other and they can breed with the parentals. Now, a lot of times they're not as successful as the parentals, but still they can breed quite a bit. And so... Um, you know, those definitions of species can sometimes break down when you're talking about fish. This is also something that we worry about, that if you take in these hybrids and you stock them out, and then if they can go breed with the parentals and each other, well, now you're really mixing up alleles from all these different species, and you're kind of breaking down the barrier between these species, and, and um, you might get something called outbreeding depression, where the organisms are actually less suited for the environment. Um, these are all other things we can talk about later. So tiger muskie, you can see uh, it's obvious where it gets its name from. Okay, so that's all we have to talk about about muskies, and um, I'll see you in the next video.